Tonight in the news, trouble with the shuttle. Plus, the bridge and the detour. I'm Bob Costantini in Luzerne County. They won't be able to cross this bridge when they come to it. I'm Jacqueline Carr in Bloomsburg, and I'll have more details. Tom's Weekend Outlook, and Joe has highlights and scores. I'm Karen Hart. I'm Nolan Johannes. All of this next on Newswatch 16 Update. In your car, listen to Newswatch 16 on WKRZ AM 1340. Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart. Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark with his backyard forecast and Joe Zone on sports. This is the News Watch 16 update. Good evening. The satellite is lost in space. And NASA officials say they don't know what went wrong. Earlier today, the Space Shuttle Challenger sent a Western Union communications satellite into orbit. NASA now says they haven't been able to contact the orbiter from the ground and they've concluded it's lost. NASA was paid $10 million to launch the 7,300-pound satellite. The five-man crew aboard the Challenger is also scheduled to launch another satellite tomorrow, this one for the government of Indonesia. But since today's blunder, NASA says the deployment of that satellite may be delayed. And, of course, Nightline will have more at 11.30. The problem back here on Earth is worn-out bridges. As Nightbeat reporter Bob Constantini says, the state's plans to fix one of those bridges on Route 315 in Luzerne County have some people upset. Almost anyone would agree this bridge needs replacing. The problem is how best to keep traffic flowing along Route 315 during the seven or eight months it will take to build a new one. At a meeting with PennDOT officials, business people from around the bridge learn of a detour that will keep heavy traffic away from their stores. Because if they're going to have to go out of their way, they're going to avoid us. If, where are we going to get our business from? Who's going to pay our bills? That's a tough question, Tim. And all I can say is, you know, if that bridge falls down. I'm not questioning whether the bridge has to come out. We want it out. What I'm saying is there has to be a different detour. I mean, one that isn't so far out of the way. The detour as proposed by PennDOT would take northbound traffic off Route 315 down through Yatesville and into Pittston Township. Here at the end of the detour through Yatesville, we see that we've gone a little less than three miles, and that's opposed to a direct route, which is a little more than one mile. But there are an estimated 10,000 passenger cars that use 315 every day. The idea of a detour along narrow Ford Street has one homeowner here concerned. I don't think very much of it. We have enough traffic the way it is right now. And if it's going to be in the summer months, it's going to be worse because then the children will be out of school. And I think it would be a dangerous situation for them. PennDOT officials have agreed to study alternative detours, including a temporary bridge that would itself cost a quarter million dollars. Bob Costantini, News Watch 16, Route 315, Luzerne County. In Columbia County, it's corrosion again that's causing concern and some inconvenience near Route 487's East Bloomsburg Bridge. News Watch 16's Jacqueline Carr reports that a reduced weight limit down to five tons means trucks and buses are going far out of their way. This is the East Bloomsburg Bridge, a bridge that connects Bloomsburg with Catawissa and other area towns. The bridge is also the route for many fuel trucks from the Hydley Fuel Company. Bill Hydley runs the company and says with the reduction in weight from 13 tons to 5 tons is expected next week. His trucks will have to travel on Interstate 80 to make deliveries and that means more money and more miles. Expenses, it's going to be very expensive with labor costs, fuel costs, wear and tear on the trucks. One of these small delivery trucks, there will, we will make at least three round trips a day. We have a transport that will be over there twice a week. I figured conservatively we are going to go an extra thousand miles out of our way per week. Not only does the way change for this bridge mean Bill Hydley's trucks are going to have to go out of their way, it also means the local school district may have to make some changes. The only option that would be viable would be to have the buses uh, go over the Susquehanna River on the Interstate 80 bridge above Mifflinville, that would uh, 
add about 13 and a half miles. School superintendent Alex Dubel says about 200 students would have to get ready for school about 20 minutes earlier with the Interstate 80 option. But school officials are hoping they can work out a deal with PennDOT to allow buses over this bridge even when the weight is reduced. Jacqueline Carr, Newswatch 16 in Bloomsburg. A bridge in Wyoming County is causing problems for some firefighters because that bridge is closed. That meant that firemen here in Nicholson Township had to take a roundabout way to get to this home. As you can see, they didn't get here in time to save the house from being destroyed by flames. It would probably take us probably two to three minutes to get here and an extra 10, 10 to 12 minutes to go around. And so in other words, three to 12, that's 15 minutes more. PennDOT says it would cost too much to fix this bridge or bring in a portable one, so firemen will have to take the long way around until a new bridge is built here in Nicholson Township. The state says that span should be in place this fall. Newswatch 16 continues with more people leaving the lines and punching the clocks and a big engine getting up ahead of steam. Plus, later on, we'll travel to Pennsylvania Road for a violin maker who does it the old-fashioned way. Baby bear cubs you've never seen before. This week on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life, you'll get a first-hand look at these newborn cubs. Bear expert Gary Alt will show some very interesting experiments that have been done. These fascinating findings could help scientists in new discoveries dealing with human medical problems. It's all this week on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life at 7. Tomorrow on WNEP TV 16. Good news on the unemployment front, both nationally and here in Pennsylvania. The number of Americans holding jobs went up last month, making the nation's unemployment rate go down two-tenths of a point. It's now at 8%. In Pennsylvania, the jobless, such as these people in Scranton, have decreased from 10.4% to 8.3%. That means 454,000 state residents were out of work and looking for a job last month. Jobs and money are key to the controversy brewing over the state's liquor control system. Today, a group of state senators held a press conference at the airport in Avoca to speak out in favor of the Liquor Control Board. Newswatch 16's Dan Fiorucci says they rebutted criticism leveled by the governor. Consumer complaints about the state store system have abounded for years. It was earlier this week that Governor Richard Thornburg blasted the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. He said it was corrupt and inefficient. It's time for a 20th century whiskey rebellion by the citizens of Pennsylvania so we can put an end to a bloated and inefficient monopoly before it becomes even more deeply entrenched. I would like to be able to debate the four of us, not just any one individual, with the governor, the pros and cons of the system, and I guarantee you one thing, he will not show up. Today, a group of state senators took issue with the governor. They say he exaggerated allegations of corruption in the LCD. There was two individuals that we were talking about out of 4,000 employees. The senators also said that the governor exaggerated when he claimed that one out of four Pennsylvanians buy liquor out of state. That's hogwash, and I gave him an opportunity to cure that, and I had the bill to do it, and they resisted it. And they say the governor failed to mention that even though the liquor board profits have declined in recent years, the board is still responsible for bringing in over $170 million in tax revenues to the state annually. I'll stand on those figures. They are accurate. They are not manufactured. They're true. And the senators say the move to abolish state stores isn't really a popular movement. It's something inspired by big business, by those who have money to make. What they want basically is you to be able to, to do one stop. Fill your car up with gasoline and go ahead and purchase both liquor and wine in their stores. The state store issue could go before the legislature this spring. Dan Fiorucci, Newswatch 16. It all rolls into place tomorrow at 2 in Scranton. This giant steam locomotive will be its, on its own power after firing up tests today on tracks behind Lackawanna Avenue. The first contingent of cars came into Scranton from Steamtown, USA, Vermont on Tuesday, pulled by modern diesels. But tomorrow afternoon, the public's invited to the tracks behind the new Hilton Hotel as old number 2317 pulls its own load into place. It'll be the first of many exhibits for Steamtown, USA at its new home in Scranton. And meteorologist Tom Clark is coming up, puffing in here tonight. Yeah. How are things, fella? Well, I'm going to head outside and try to stay dry over the next five minutes. We have the radar all warmed up and ready to go, and when we come back, we'll answer the question, 
if it's going to get cold enough for this rain to change to snow tonight. Stay tuned. American women have a golden Olympic history. Tenley Albright, Carol Heitz, Peggy Fleming, Dorothy Hamill, and beginning Monday, world champion Rosalind Sumners will have her chance to bring home the gold. Well, Tom Clark said it would be a little warmer today, but it was hardly enjoyable with all the rain and wind, Tom. Right. Miserable. That's for sure. It was quite a stormy day today, Karen and Nolan. But uh, look outside here. I don't see much snow at all. It's all washed away today. And in the rain gauge, about a tenth of an inch has fallen up to this point. Now, tonight's weather report is uh, dedicated to all the students I spoke to this afternoon at the Kistler Elementary School in Wilkes-Barre. And I say that because they like to see me stand outside in the wind and rain to do the weather. But you know, I don't even need this at the moment because the rain is just very light as we stand out here tonight. Let's look at the temperature now as it stands uh, on the thermometer. It's well above freezing still in the backyard and over the entire state. 42 degrees. The wind is southwest to 12. The humidity is quite high and the barometer is falling. The range in temperature, look at that high, 42 this afternoon, a whopping 9 degrees above normal. Didn't feel bad, but it looked awful. The low this morning, 28 degrees, and that is well above the normal low of 18. Look at that record high set just one year ago today. Newswatch 16's Skywarn radar is coming up next, and you can see the live sweep there. Let's take a look at those interstates. There's Route 80 coming down along the bottom, Route 380 over here. There's Carbondale up there, and 81 coming down like so. Uh, just some pockets of slightly heavier rain showing up in green west of Wilkes-Barre. Otherwise, uh, generally a light rain pattern falling over the area tonight. Now the Newswatch 16 color satellite photograph shows all the clouds up and down the eastern seaboard. Look at these heavy thunderstorms down there in the uh, eastern Gulf of Mexico, very bright white. Those clouds extending up to about 35,000 feet into the atmosphere and some rain around the launch site uh, now, but it was nice and dry this morning as the shuttle went up. Now there is a weak front crossing Pennsylvania tonight. I say that because the push of cold air behind it is becoming weaker and weaker. However, there is a stronger push of cold air that is coming down out of southern Canada and that will be moving through here Sunday. Why? Because, well, let's take a look at those jet stream winds on the computer. There's Canada and the uh, United States. Look at the flow of air coming in out of Alaska and then straight down into the U.S., allowing a fresh outbreak of frigid air to move in here during the day on Sunday. And as we head into Monday, temperatures will probably hover in the low teens for highs. So get said, old man winter is coming back in town. Now tonight, it's going to stay mild. The rain will not change to snow except for maybe up in the north central mountains of Pennsylvania. Even there, just a little wet snow, nothing more than a little slush will accumulate, but it will stay wet over most of the area tonight. Now, 38 will be the low in Manuka, a section of Scranton, and temperatures, as you can see, mostly uh, above freezing tonight. 38 for the uh, low in Palo Alto, not too much different from where it is now. Cloudy tomorrow, maybe a passing shower. Most of the day will be dry. It'll stay mild. Temperatures, as you can see, holding, uh, well, the low 40s for highs tomorrow. So one more mild day before the cold air begins to move back in. Resistance to aches and pains will be low tomorrow because of falling barometers and high humidity. Looking ahead to Sunday, the high only 27, 14 to high on Monday, in the teens on Tuesday as well. One more mild day this week, and, and then it gets cold again on Sunday. So uh, no ice tonight. Well, that that's, is that's very good. good news, at least, right? Yeah, at least. At cold least. for the weekend, though. Yeah. Uh, here we go again. <laughs> Joe Zone is up next with the sports. Tonight, Joe has the story of Dave Popson playing in the shadow of an All-American. For Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania's first and only local early morning newscast, join Frank Andrews, Dorothy Lucy, Jay Christopher, and meteorologist Noreen Clark for the most complete morning coverage of news, weather, and sports. During these winter months, turn to Newswatch 16 this morning at 6.30 a.m. for a complete list of school closings, road and weather conditions, along with the most accurate coverage of the news overnight. Newswatch 16 this morning, each weekday at 6.30 a.m. At Newswatch 16, the news comes. Joe, we've seen and heard a lot about Dave Popson the last couple days. Got some more tonight for us? Tonight we're going to sort of 
sum the whole thing up, hopefully, put the wrappers on it. Now, you've seen North Carolina play on TV this year, but you know what? You haven't seen a lot of Dave Popson. He is going through what most freshmen go through there, the waiting game. So while he's cracking the books to maintain that C-plus average, he is still spending nearly as much time learning basketball. And when David academically is over, every single day he comes here to the Carmichael Auditorium, where the second part of his student life begins, that of a college basketball player in the tough ACC. The Atlantic Coast Conference, considered by many as the toughest in the country. The quality of basketball is so good that a freshman at North Carolina sees very little playing time, especially a freshman who plays behind one of the top five college players in America. Sam Perkins is there, first team All-American, and uh, I think Sam Perkins played all 40 minutes in high school of every game, and he's a senior, and he's played about all of every game here at North Carolina, so obviously you go with experience. So Popson sits a lot. He's averaging four minutes and three points a game. That's quite an adjustment for a kid who's played more high school games than any player in Pennsylvania history. But David knew way back in the beginning what he could expect his freshman year here. Well, I don't have to really, you know, deal with it. I just go in and, and you know, give it my best shot each time I'm in. You know, give Sam a break. Because, you know, Sam's, you know, the, the player. He's the All-American. It's a long drive from Popson's home in Ashley to Chapel Hill, about 10 hours. But David's family makes the trip on game days as often as it can, knowing full well David may not even play. Well, I think as a coach, you know, you can only play so many people, and uh, of course you play your best people, and that's the way it is. When you become the best, then you play. Mm -hmm. How about these drives down? It must take a, a toll on your weekend, on your personal life, on your social life. Enjoy every minute of it. <laughs> this is my personal life, yes. <laughs> Love it. It shouldn't be long before Popson moves into a bigger role at North Carolina. Perkins and the other starting forward, Matt Doherty, will be gone next year. And Dean Smith has not recruited any big people this year. The job is Popsin's, if he can cut the mustard. A lot of basketball people believe he can. Some think even Popsin is destined to become another in a long line of Tar Heel All-Americans. I look at it and myself just to improve each year. If I could get better each year, you know, I think I could go some places. It's much too early to say what kind of impact Popsin will have in North Carolina, but as Dean Smith told me, Wait till Dave's a junior and a senior, and you're going to see something from that kid. Ski report now for the weekend. we got the best ski conditions of the year, but we got to tell you, folks, big boulder, 11 slopes, 5 lifts. Camelback, 24 slopes, 6 lifts. It's like having a beach report in, you know, California. Elk Mountain, 18 slopes, 5 lifts. Jack Frost, 18 slopes, 7 lifts. Mount Tone and Lake Como, 10 slopes and 4 lifts, 20 to 54 inch base. Shawnee and the Delaware, 17 slopes, 4 lifts. Tanglewood at Lake Wallen Pawpack, eight slopes, four lifts. Tussie Mountain at State College, three slopes, three lifts, machine pack. That's all of it. Give tonight your best shot. Loaded with the good high school basketball stuff tonight, scoreboard and everything. You'll get it here. See you later. All right. A speed skater from the Virgin Islands. Where does he train? Who knows, but uh, he's probably pretty lonely by himself. Yeah. Probably at some North American university, more than likely, right? <laughs> we wish him the best of luck. Yes, all the luck to him. Thank, Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jill. Newswatch 16 rolls down the Pennsylvania Road, next with Mike Stevens. Tonight we go to Cumberland County to visit a guy who turns raw wood into a musical instrument of top quality. I will you try? $16,000 can be yours weekdays at 4. In this world, there are still some people who don't consider something completed until it's done right, no matter how long it takes. The Pennsylvania Road took Mike Stevens to Cumberland County into the shop of such a person. in intricate patterns, who shaves and cuts wood in millimeters. This is serious business, very serious, time-consuming work. Here, give me a kiss. Ed Campbell, who is the master violin maker here, thinks there ought to be some fun in what you do. For Ed, this shop, 
with violins hanging from the ceiling like bats in a cave, is his entertainment. As a youngster growing up in Dunmore, Ed found his future was music and the things that make it. I was 13 years old. It's been downhill ever since. Total fascination. You know, anything with a shape like that can't be all bad. But there is a serious side to Ed Campbell. He is, after all, among the top six instrument makers in the world. You will pay as much as $10,000 for a violin he makes, and he doesn't make many. I didn't finish any fiddles at all this past fall. The ones that I'm going to finish this year will be two celli, a viola, and a violin, and they were all started two years ago. Ed works also at teaching others the art of violin making. How to make something that, in the end, has got to be its own best reward. The biggest thrill of all is when you get one of these things put together. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you've got this. Here's a violin. And the challenge gets more intense and more intense because you want this one better than the last one uh, and the next one. And no, this is pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff it is. The finished work of a man intent on making the best. How do you keep beating yourself time after time after time? And it works. I'm Mike Stevens, Newswatch 16, on the Pennsylvania Road in Boiling Springs. You can't only make them, you can play them pretty yeah, well, too, pretty right? Yeah, pretty nice. Nice, nice. Beautiful. That's Newswatch 16 for this Friday. Be sure to join us tonight on the update when we'll find out why some businesses in our area might be in hot water over troubled bridges. World News Tonight is next. They'll have a report on a cancer-causing chemical and the story on the shuttle. We'll be back at 11. Enjoy your evening. Good night.